Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Chapter uh, 2, Part 3 of our Computer Network Training Series. We're going to be looking at the OSI model. Uh, a little bit about me again. Uh, this I've been in the industry for about 25 years. been teaching about 10. I have the A+, plus, uh, Network Plus certifications, along with some Cisco certifications, CCNA. Also certified as a CCNA instructor. Again, our website, uh, computernetworktraining.net, you might find some additional useful information. Well, let's get started. Uh, again, network, uh, computer networks, uh, chapter two, part three, the OSI model. OSI model continued, the transport layer. Okay, we went over the application layer this, and the presentation layer and the session layer on the last uh, part. And today we're going to pick up at the transport layer. Now the transport layer, the protocols in the transport layer accept data from the session layer and manage uh, this data end to end for the end to end delivery. Uh, we're going to find the transport layer is concerned about quite a few things along with the accuracy and it also does some error correcting for us. Ensure the data is transferred from point A to point B reliably uh, in the correct sequence and without errors. In sequence, as we segmented our data, we have several packets now that represent our file. And these packets will have numbers assigned to them. So we're always concerned that when we uh, receive this data, that we put it back in the proper sequence so that the file is reconstructed properly. And if we have an error, if there's a problem because this data is actually examined through an algorithm to, de to determine if any of the bits have uh, changed or if there's been any errors introduced. If so, uh, this transport layer will request the resend of that particular packet. And uh, once that packet is received, then it will go ahead and start creating the file from it. Transport layer continued. Uh, without the transport layer services, data could not be verified or interpreted. So it wouldn't know if we've lost a packet, and when we re try to reconstruct files, uh, we wouldn't know if those files are actually correct or not. Uh, handles flow control. Now, depending on uh, the bandwidth, uh, we can either speed up or slow down uh, the transmission of this data and try to find a level, uh, depending on the circumstances, what's going on, how fast we can move this data. And it'll change dynamically depending on the conditions. Uh, some transport uh, layer protocols take steps to ensure that the data arrives exactly as it was sent. Uh, and that's important for uh, for some situations, especially with voice. Uh, we can't have the packets out of sequence. Uh, otherwise, the voice transmission wouldn't uh, would degrade. Uh, transport layer uh, continued again. Uh, such protocols known as connection-oriented. Our TCP protocol is what we call a connection-oriented protocol. Uh, before we start sending data out, we got to make sure that we have somebody that's receiving it and that we can also control that flow of data. And this is a three-step process. When we send it out, there's a request made. Uh, that the client the client sends uh, back this acknowledgement, and then there's a acknowledgement to the acknowledgement, and then the session uh, is started and created, and data begins to transfer. It's also called a three-way handshake. Uh, transport layer continued, uh, check sum. Now this is a method for error correcting. And there's a little algorithm and number that's come up with from the data uh, to determine that the data has not changed. If it's changed, then we need to resend a new packet. Uh, the connectionless, connectionless protocols, example of that would be the IP protocol. And an example of that might be uh, when we send out mail, uh, we don't know. Uh, if anybody receives it or not, ends up going to a post office, and then sometime later uh, your recipient might uh, review it. But we really don't know if it got out there or not. It's not like the TCP we're actually sending data, and we need to verify uh, each packet, that each packet arrived and arrived safely without errors. So we have a connectionless type protocol, the IP, and then a connection-oriented protocol, the TCP. Process is known as segmentation. We segment our data at the transport layer. We break it up into pieces. We don't want to send a complete file because if that file uh, gets destroyed or corrupted, then we'd have to resend the entire file. So breaking it up into pieces can help to make our transmission a little faster, a little more efficient in case there's problems. Process is known as segmentation necessary for data units to match a network's maximum uh, transmission unit. And the maximum transmission unit might vary uh, depending on what's going on uh, with, with our lines. Transport layer continued. The reassembly of these uh, segments or packets 
uh, into our files when we receive the data. Uh, we make sure that the sequence is proper. Each packet will have a number. We're going to make sure that the sequence is uh, maintained. Uh, here you can see our seven layers, the application, presentation, session, transport, uh, network, data, link, and physical, uh, our, our PDUs, the data, the segments, the packets, the frames. And then over here you can see the uh, what we call the encapsulation where we're adding data. Uh, or information to our packets. As it comes down and it hits the transport layer, we add our TCP header information to our packets, so our packet gets a little bit bigger. Then down at the network layer, we're adding the IP address. So again, we add the uh, both the sender and the receiver of, of this packet, his IP address. And then we get down to where we frame it at our data link layer, and we're adding the physical address, the MAC address. So again, more information is added to our packets until we break it down into bits, and these are voltage levels that go out over the cable. Notice I model the network layer. Okay, the primary function of uh, the protocols in the network layer is to translate network addresses. Uh, we're going to be adding the IP address. We're going to determine uh, whose IP address is, if, the, is, is, if it's going to be from the sender, that we're going to add his IP address. If it's coming from the receiver, we're going to uh, be looking at the IP address matching it with other packets so that we can sequence our data and come up with the files. Uh, network, network layer addresses also called logical addresses or virtual addresses. Uh, it's called logical or virtual because we can change these addresses with the software. Now like a physical address which we can't change. So these are logical. Network layer continued. Uh, the routers, the pieces of equipment that is used at this layer is used to route this information based on the IP address. So the routers look at the IP address and determine the path needed uh, to route this information to its destination. Also perform fragmentation. Data link layer. The data link layer is where we add our MAC address. There's actually a sub layer here, the logical link control and the MAC. Physical layer, that's where we break it down into our bits or our voltage layers and then we put it on the cable. Uh, layer functions uh, at the application layer, this is our user interface. Presentation is where the data is formatted or encrypted or whatever it's needs uh, so that the user can use it. Session, we're establishing our connection and maintaining it. Transport is our TCP. We're going to maintain and make sure this is, data is transmitted accurately. Uh, the network layer, we add the IP address. The routers use this for routing the data. Our data link, we're adding the MAC address physical. Our switches uh, use this information to switch this data in a local area network. And then our physical, the signals, and we use our cables or our media. Uh, that's it for this section. Uh, thank you very much for your time.